Paphos swept us away with its crashing waves and its beautiful harbor and gorgeous sunshine. But there's more to the city than its relaxing low-key vibe. Welcome back to Finding Gina Marie, where we share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, hi, I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. Welcome. We spent 31 days in Katos Paphos, which is the harbor town area of Paphos. Inland is considered old town Paphos. Katos Paphos is new town. Paphos really reminded us of Greece in a lot of ways, especially since there's also ancient ruins here. Aphrodite's mythical birthplace is in Paphos, and the entire city is considered a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Beginning in 300 BC, Paphos was under the control of the Ptolemies and was once the capital of Cyprus. In this episode, we share our observations about Paphos, our experience in the harbor area, the transportation, and in the end, we'll share with you our cost for everything. We'll also be talking about food. Lots of food. Paphos is a city on the southwest coast of the island of Cyprus. It's located in the Mediterranean Sea, just south of Turkey and west of Syria. Cyprus is an EU country, but not part of the Schengen zone, which has helped us out, gives us a little more time to be able to tra travel in other European countries. We have a one minute video that covers the Schengen rules to understand how you have to cooperate with the 90, 180 day rule. Arriving in mid-March, the weather was very different from what we had left in Egypt. It was a bit rainy when we arrived, a little cool during the day. Sun and rain, special first time. But as you can see, the longer we've been here, the more beautiful the weather has been. So that's been awesome. Our first night, we walked down to the harbor, had a lovely dinner, and enjoyed a beautiful sunset right outside a restaurant, even though we couldn't sit outside because of a little bit of sprinkling of rain. That's one of the best parts about being in the harbor area, is you get an unobstructed view to all of the sunsets, and we've tried to catch as many of them as we can. There were a few days when the waves were really crazy. On the whole, it's been very balanced. So although there have been a lot of times where it's been crashing waves, There are other days where the water just looks like glass or hardly moving and it's just really lovely and peaceful. One of the quirks that I didn't realize was going to happen when we arrived here is we've been running around with uh, EU plugs for most of Europe and even in Egypt and we got here and they're British plugs. And it makes sense. From 1914 to 1960, Cyprus was under British rule. So you'll see a lot of British tourism and foods catering to the British tourists that come here. Yeah, and they even drive on the left side of the road, which has confused me at first also. Because we arrived here in the middle of March, it was pretty deserted and we didn't see a lot of tourists. And now as it climbs closer to the middle of April, we can really see the difference. We can see the buildup of people. There's definitely more joggers. There's definitely more people lounging around and a lot more swimmers. Well, I think that also has to do with the weather in general being a bit warmer. But our waiters have mentioned to us that April is when tourism season starts. One of the things that we've done for several nights is to walk along the promenade. All along the harbor, as you walk towards the southern side of the island, there are resorts that go dotted each one after the other. And there's a public beach in front of Alexander the Great Hotel. Where we're staying is just about a 10 minute walk from the harbor, so it's actually perfect. We are not paying maybe the prices that you would if you were directly on the beach, but we're able to see some of the archeological ruins and, and it's just a really nice quick walk. The construction did get in the way a little bit because some of the streets that we would normally just walk through have been dug up and so you have to go around the fences. In fact, the supermarket that we like to shop at is in the middle of the construction zone. <laughs> we made it tricky a couple times because I thought it was going the right way, zigzagged and I was on the wrong side of a fence. We had to go around another block. So it would have been nice if the streets were done being worked on, but it looks like there's a lot of infrastructure that's being added to the city. 
We have a kitchen and we use it a lot, but one of the things that it's missing to our favor is it doesn't have a coffee machine. So we take a stroll every morning, we'll sometimes have breakfast, and then we'll come to the harbor area. And we found one lovely cafe that we really enjoy. In fact, I talk about it in one of Judy's journal articles. So if you haven't checked that out, we'll link it in the description. The cappuccinos at Aliyah have been great. And so has our wait staff. Demetrius and David have been wonderful. They greet us every day. They pretty much know what we're gonna have, but sometimes we don't get to cook breakfast in the apartment and we end up ordering a little bit to share at their place. It's also nice that we get to look at the water, get to people watch while we're sitting there having our lovely morning coffees. In addition to the regulars who are swimming almost every day, jumping off the pier, doing nice laps back and forth between the buoys, there are people with hang gliders and jet skis and different kind of boating activities. There's definitely some water sports going on in this area of town. I was challenged to do a 10K while we were here, and it worked out perfectly because you could go from the sunset most area of the waterfront all the way to 10K. So it made for a fun but speedy trip along the harbor. It was a walk. We're running a 10K. But it still was <laughs> hot that night, so we were sweating. A lot. A lot. <laughs> we were challenged to complete a 10K today, and we did it. It was great. A little warm today. I think it was our first really nice day that we had. We had a problem getting our flight. It was actually canceled coming out of Cairo. So instead of going directly to Paphos, we had to reschedule to Larnaca Airport. Luckily, there's a bus system that goes from Larnaca to Limassol to Paphos and it's called the uh, Limassol Airport Express. So it was nice to know that there was a second option when we needed it. If you didn't rent a car or hire a car, as they say here, uh, it's super convenient to be taking buses. The buses seem to run on time and you can actually pay when you get on the bus, so that's not a problem. There's no searching around for ticket booths. Renting cars here or hiring cars seems to be a common practice, and I can understand why. There's a lot of areas that are up in the mountains that people might want to drive to, so this is one of the countries that we may recommend grabbing a car and doing some driving. But only if you're comfortable driving on the left side of the road versus the right side. It does help though that the road signs are written in Greek as well as English. So let's talk food. Because this is a touristy area, the harbor has all kinds of cuisines, Italian, Greek, American, and they're trying to cater to everybody that they can. Spicy salami on it instead of ham, which is what it comes with, and it's got gorgonzola. Metze is very popular here, and it's offered in many of the tavernas in this area. It's a combination of many foods that you could just sample. There's meat, there's fish, and there's also a mixed grill metze. We are having some metze, which is a typical Cyprus dish. And really, it's just a series of meats and vegetables and multiple courses. We have yet to see how many courses this is actually gonna end up being. They typically say it's for two people, but it's gonna be for more than two people. You'll be plenty full. We did our best. We can't go through it anymore. It's way too much meat, way too much veggies and goodness before the meat, so we're both done. It's all really tasty. I feel like for as much as I enjoyed everything, I would have been content with the mixed grill and the salad. Nobody needed french fries or pita. Or oh, I like the french fries. Everything else was good. Yeah. My stomach can't handle all of it. Well, just half of the meat then. <laughs> Another thing that you absolutely must try is halloumi cheese, and it's homemade here right in the Trudeau's Mountains. We went on a tour to see how it was made and to taste fresh halloumi, and we have an episode coming up on that. So if you haven't already subscribed, you'll want to do so now so you don't miss it. Because of the long history of Cyprus and the fact that it is a beautiful island nation, there have been other inhabitants here like the Romans, and there are a lot of Roman ruins on this island, many of which are free just on the side of the road. We passed by the Hellenistic Amphitheater on our way to our Airbnb. There's also a Roman medieval bath from the Ottoman era that's near us as well. That amphitheater is partially built into a hill and it's as old as the fourth century BC. And there's also some catacombs that are nearby just on the other side of the amphitheater. And the sites that aren't free are well worth paying for, like the Paphos Archaeological Park. It's only four and a half euro per person and the value far exceeds that amount, so it's a must do. And it's a very short walk from the harbor area, so you don't have to go very far. The park includes sites and monuments from the 4th century BC to the Middle Ages. 
There are intricate mosaic floors of four Roman villas depicting various scenes from daily life, portraits of important figures, and mythological scenes all more than 2,000 years old. The mosaics represented their social status, and they wanted their art to last forever. One of the other major archaeological sites is the Tombs of the Kings, and it's even cheaper at only 250 euro. They do have QR codes at each of the sites so that you can read and hear about what you're looking at. An important point to note is that these tombs aren't really of kings. They are of wealthy people from Pathos who had enough money and were important enough that they built special tombs for them. We didn't see anyone digging while we were there, but these sites still have archaeological digs happening on a very regular basis, and new things are being uncovered all the time. As with any of the UNESCO sites, this is all based on funding, so okay. they don't have money to do it now, they will just do it whenever they can. Old Town Paphos is about a 30 minute walk from where our Airbnb is, so it was pretty convenient to stop there. Ideally, you'll want to visit during the week, where they have open air markets with a lot of different arts and crafts, and there are arts and crafts stores that are open, there's a ton of different kinds of food. There's also a Roman bath. And the area is very walkable, just like the rest of Paphos. And a pretty cool street art scene. Let's break down the cost of what we spent here in Paphos, starting with our Airbnb. And the total cost of that was $1,470.26. That was for 32 days, which breaks down to $45.95 a day. As we said earlier, the archaeological park was 450 euro, and the Tombs of the Kings was 250 euro. Our cappuccino every morning was four euros per person. And when we do get breakfast, instead of just cappuccinos, it's about 20 euros. That includes a tip. And that was typically either an English breakfast or a croque madame. Portion sizes were very generous, so it was no problem to share. Metze was about 25 euro per person, and that was really a steal for the amount of food that you got. When we went for lunch, it was a little cheaper. It was 27 euro all in. Okay, to sum it all up, what do you think of our time in Pathos? Was it worth coming here? It was absolutely worth coming. We had a really wonderful time. I would recommend it highly to anyone. And it's actually very nice this time of year. Even though it was a little chilly when we got here, you're avoiding the tourists and the crowds, and you're also avoiding some of the summer months that can be pretty darn hot. But with all of the beach activities, if you are somebody who wants to do all of the water sports and things like that, uh, this is a perfect time to be coming. I think it gets really hectic in June and probably very, very hot then. So between April and May is probably a wonderful time. We're so excited that our channel has almost 2,000 subscribers and we love hearing from you. So if you have anything to leave us in the comments, we answer every single one of them. And check out findingenuity.com. Judy's Journal has a lot of great articles and details about what we're seeing and doing. Until next time. Until next time. Pavo Spef. Spef. Papo Spef. <laughs> what? What's Spef? I don't know. Papo Spef. <laughs> Just say it now. Swept. Papo Swept. The cappuccino at Aaliyah has been great, and so have our wait staff, the waiters, Alex and <laughs> Demetrius, Demetrius and, and David. David. I know. <laughs> if you had me thinking. <laughs>